So the purpose of this video, or the goal, is to develop a method by which we can actually determine if a matrix is definite, positive definite, negative definite, whatever. And uh, it's a uh, it, since it's so important to know if it's definiteness uh, or a, a matrix is definite to determine the characterization of a maximum or a minimum we have to have a simple way to compute whether it's definite or not um, we of course have a method for the 2 by 2 right um, the 2 by 2 said well we just had to check the um, the leading entry of the matrix A11 if that's positive, and if the determinant of the entire matrix is positive, then we have a positive definite matrix. But we want to figure out how to gener characterize general matrices, right? So the goal is, goal is uh, determine a method or a procedure for uh, determining definiteness. And we need some definitions to start. So definition. Suppose A is an n by n matrix. Uh, a k by k sub matrix of A is obtained by deleting N minus K columns and N minus K rows with the same index. So that gives you a a k by k, um, and this is a, a this matrix is a principal sub matrix. of A, and we'll call it a kth order principal submatrix. And the determinant of a kth order principal submatrix of A is called a kth order principal minor so minors of course we saw when we were talking about the uh, or the inverse or the adjugate of a matrix right those those showed up and now uh, those minors were of course uh, n minus one -th order minors, uh, principal minors. Uh, but now, of course, we're going to have, uh, uh, and, and they weren't actually principal minors, they were just minors, because we were taking out things with different uh, indices, right? Um, so a quick example to just make this concrete. Suppose we have a two by two matrix, say A11, A12, a13, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, A33. Well, the uh, the first order principal principal minors are R and matrices are A11, A22 and A33. So A11 I got by deleting the second 
row and second column and uh, well second second row and second column and third row and third column a22 first row first column third row third column 3 3 first row or first row first column second row second row second column so those are the first order principal minors the second order principal minors we get by deleting just one row and one column, so one row and one column. So the first one I'll get is by deleting the third row, is I get the determinant A11, A12, A21, A22. Right, there are exactly three of them. A11, A13, A31, A33. And uh, a22, A23, A32, A33. Those are all the second order principal minors. So it turns out that uh, the principal minors are important for computing definiteness, but we don't have to figure them all out, thank goodness. Uh, so what's most important for our purposes are the leading principal minors. So the leading, the leading kth order principal submatrix of A is the k by k matrix obtained by deleting the last n minus k columns slash rows of a matrix. So we just get rid of the last columns and rows and that gives us the k by k principal submatrix and the kth order leading principal minor is its determinant. And it turns out that these are really the quantities of interest that we shall consider when we want to determine the definiteness of a symmetric, square symmetric matrix. Um, so for the 3x3 three three case we have A11, A11, A12, A21, a22 and the full determinant a13 a21 a22 a23 a31 a32 a33 are the uh, first order and third first second and third order principal minors for our 3 by 3 case. So now we're going to tell you the theorem that generalizes the 2 by 2 case that we have. So theorem, let A be n by n symmetric matrix then A A is positive definite if and only if all leading principal minors are greater than zero. 
right? So we, we immediately see that this generalizes the case for a 2 by 2 matrix, right? So for a 3 by 3, I would have to show that A11 is positive, this determinant is positive, and the final determinant is positive. And then I would know that this matrix is positive definite, uh, if, it, if it were also symmetric, right? So negative definite. So it's negative definite if and only if. the n leading principal minors alternate in sign starting with A11 is less than zero. That's my, that's our characterization of negative definiteness. So we have to basically look at the sign pattern of the matrix. Uh, if all non-zero, uh, but not in the pattern above, then this thing is indefinite. So that's just the situation. Now uh, we have another theorem. So if, uh, if the LPMs or the leading principal minors are at zero, so if it's zero but, it, but all others fit the sign pattern, then we have to check all of the principal minors, right? So, so we have positive definiteness here and negative definiteness and indefiniteness, so that's all characterized, but what about semi-definiteness, right? So semi-definite. Right? Uh, we have to check all principal minors, which is not good. So theorem So A is positive semi-definite if and only if all principal minors are greater than or equal to zero and negative definite or negative semi-definite if and only if odd order principal minors are less than or equal to zero and even order PMs are greater than or equal to zero. So that's a real pain. You have to compute a lot of stuff, right? So usually, usually it's nice to just show that it's definite or or indefinite. That's that's the ideal situation. Uh, and and we can immediately use this. It's really simple for diagonal matrices, right? So diagonal matrix diagonal matrices have simple uh, principal determinants, right, or principal minors, and especially and, and leading principal minors, right? Uh, so it's positive definite if all diagonal entries and this is easy to see, are strictly greater than zero. And it's negative definite if all diagonal entries less than zero. And these are actually if and only if statements, right, because of our theorem, right? So if all my diagonal entries are greater than zero, then I'm positive definite. 
And if I were positive, definite, and diagonal, I know that all my diagonal entries have to be greater than zero.